Okay, so hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, I guess first of all, a little notice is that we moved to the um, community group system that they're using Comet BFT. Um, it just means that we don't have to keep like a massive calendar with loads of people invited. It's just, you join the group, you follow the calendar. The notes are there. Um, you can put other documents and resources there in one place. It's just kind of easy to keep track of things. So please do join. We fixed the link from last time, so it should now work. Um, please try if you haven't joined already and just let me know if you have any problems. Um, put the, the link in the chat as well. Um, so yeah, just some, I guess, more brief updates this time from um, the Interchain team and I'll populate the rest of the notes with the uh, Relay teams and other updates. But um, next week we have a uh, team retreat in Barcelona where we'll be hopefully talking about some more long-term priorities amongst other things. So I guess if anyone has things to raise now, uh, we can talk about that later as well. Um, or always feel free to send a message. Um, um, some product specific, oh, I should be sharing my screen. Sorry about that. Uh, let me do that now. It makes it a bit clearer for everyone. Oh, I can't share screen. I'm not the host. Um, can I try? I can try now. Um, okay. Can everyone see that? Um, yeah, so just a couple of product updates. We're migrating our docs to Docosaurus from a ViewPress theme. Um, not particularly exciting. Everyone, Everyone's like looking at the docs, life shouldn't change, but it was uh, to make that easier to manage going forwards. And there are some like small improvements, like being able to access um, the ADRs directly from the doc site, which right now you couldn't do. Um, it was also um, the memo field registry was merged into the chain registry. So then uh, we need to then link that to existing docs and stuff and obviously go in the spec. Um, on protocol and engineering, um, mostly been focused on channel upgradability. And uh, I think there's been a bit of a like back and forth between the specs and design. Just kind of moving along smoothly. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, on a high level, most of the updates. Uh, we all had like a, well, I guess on our team, uh, one of our engineers has had a baby as well. Um, so little shout out there and congratulations. Um, but yeah, um, do we have any, updates on um, Hermes and the Relay teams? Or is there anything else? Um... Uh, yeah, for the Hermes team, I, we have a quick update. So we released a small patch to support Comet BFT in version checks. But uh, other than that, we're focusing on uh, following the spec evolution of the channel upgrade and uh, we're also looking at improving a bit the user experience around configuring Hermes. That's all. I don't think anything huge on the Go Relayer side. Uh, the 2.3 release uh, fixed a lot of stability issues. Um, it's we we kicked out a 2.3.1 with some minor bug fixes. Um, Strange Love has been running more and more of these things in production, which has been great, and uh, have been getting increasing adoption. Lavender Five Nodes just mentioned that they migrated to the Relayer, which is exciting. Any update on localhost support? Jim, I don't know. You'd have to talk to Justin about that. Uh, he was unable to make the call today, so I am the insufficient Strange Love representative today. All right. That's Thanks, all. Cool. I'll uh, ask him in chat. I was going to say that's pretty cool on the um, like people running 
uh, the relay. Um, like, I know that lots of, like when I speak to people, there are people testing, but it's cool. Are they like using this in production? Like, Yeah, I think all five of the largest relayers doing community stuff are all running uh, relay now, which is exciting. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and I don't know if we have any other topics or updates. If I, can, oh, yeah, have a, if I can have a digression, yeah. <laughs> since we have the time, I just, <laughs> we are, we are in the, uh, last stages of preparing an RC candidate for the Agoric platform release with, you know, vaults for IST. So, um, so that's where we've mostly had our heads down, but that were, there will be, you know, that, that should uh, be go, no go end of this week. And then heading towards, you know, community, uh, larger community tests and, and roll out uh, later in May. So, so it's exciting. I had to share it. <laughs> Everyone knows how hard getting any platform or anything done is. So, <laughs> so we're getting there. That is exciting. I'll be yeah keeping a look. And out. turf is good, which is you know it's like you know three hundred milliseconds or something to create a vault. <laughs> so. So we're happy. Okay, return from interrupt. No, no, no problem at all. I enjoyed the interruption. Um, yeah, any other um, updates? Was anyone at a consensus last week or anything? Um, Yes, I was at I at on a panel in consensus. I think a few others uh, were at different panels. This one was talking about IBC, um, and uh, with Sunny and Adrian and um, uh, Stephen from Axelar, Stephen Fruin, I think, um, and um, and so you know having. Uh, uh, having everything set up to be able to do shielded accounts on Anoma or Nomada um, and and doing uh, remote trades, you know, one one transaction trades to other chains like Osmosis or being able to, you know, automate things like set up a vault um, from shielded assets and bring the IST back into uh, into Nomada or that sort of thing. You know, that was that was sort of we we were we were we were able to talk about use cases for IBC and the value prop for IBC where it's just so radically different than people than other other systems that are just bridging tokens um and um uh and so so that that seemed well received but it was certainly exciting to 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 sort of see that that promise of IBC is has has started coming together to let you know let people do this totally new class of stuff in the Cosmos ecosystem that that you know I think as I said we're just we're just at the beginning of but it already starts to look different. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean just the application composability generally has gone a long way from just moving tokens around. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it's exciting. Lots of teams working on yeah various cool applications with IBC. It's really coming and you, alive. <laughs> and do you have any updates on um, the game of NFTs or whatever it's called? You know, the ICS twenty, ICS 721 and, and what people are doing for the interop of NFTs? Yeah, so I, I think as far as I'm aware, the like first phase is over which was kind of the bug testing, battle testing of the NFT module. Um, and now I think it's more the, the phase two is the hackathon and people like, I don't know, building certain things, projects out with the NFT modules and the cross-chain NFT module. Um, 
I don't, I don't know whether they already announced some prizes or there's some like prizes for the first phase to be announced. Um, I, I must admit, I'm not the most up to date with it. Um, but yeah, I think there's two phases and I think first phase is over and second phase is either started or should be starting soon or there was another proposal to tick that off or something. Um, but yeah. I don't know if anyone was more involved with it. Oh, you said, uh, Dean, that you weren't able to access the group. Okay, cool. Yeah, then I will just let you in. Uh, you should have access soon. But yeah, I don't know um, all the precise details of it, but I think it's coming along. Do we have anything else to share about um, Wasm contract callbacks, ADR8 stuff? Um, I could share a little bit. Um, so I'm working with the FMOS team to build the ADR8 for EVM. Um, so I'm looking to get a response on them, hopefully in the next couple of weeks on, on how that's going. Um, and we had a call with Alex from Confio about some suggestions that he had. Um, I think Colin has the latest context on that. So tomorrow I'll have a chat with him on if there's anything we need to change on our site to make uh, Cosm Wasm contracts um, callbacks as you know well designed as possible. Nice. Um, yeah. Thank you for the update. Um, I guess, uh, does anyone have anything else to discuss? Um, I think I can maybe also share that uh, on Friday we had the IBC summit in Austin and uh, with the Palmer team there, we demoed a hello world message being sent from a wasm chain to an evm chain an eth2 chain to be more specific so there was a really cool demo and we're going to release the uh, recording of that soon and also a blog post to uh, explain a little bit more what happened there was a hello world message between eth2 ETH ETH and a wasm d chain yeah it's completely over ibc Okay, that's cool. Uh, when you get the um, the recording, you can also like paste it in the notes. That would be really nice to see. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. And how was the the rest of the summit? Were there some of the cool talks as well? Yeah, we had uh, a lot of uh, great talks, uh, which will also be uploaded uh, shortly. Um, I did catch some calls, so I hope that the other people who were there, Dean, et cetera, are, are doing fine. Yep. I saw at least three good, interesting talks. So, um, And one of them, you know, we, we were doing the prep for the IBC panel at Protocol Village. And, you know, talking about, I want to talk about, okay, we need to talk about, you know, it's, it's about sort of, you know, how IBC goes beyond. So what are application protocols that people have built on IBC that are more than just token transfer? And Sonny had been preparing his talk for the IBC summit that went through a bunch of those. He like pulls out his slide and he's showing the animation of like uh, pass shortening and, and um, uh, uh, you know, the ICA and Oracle protocols and stuff like that. And so, yes, there's, there is, there's gotten to be quite a litany of, application protocols that people have built. It's probably at this point, it's big enough to be worth considering if there's a IBC website, you know, that is, that actually gets, you know, that, that gets maintenance. I'm not sure where the obvious place to have it is, but having a nice, you know, um, 
list with a one paragraph summary of what that protocol is would actually, I think, be quite, you know, and, and or pointers to examples of the protocols working together would be quite, uh, would be, would be nice. Yeah. So actually we, uh, it's a, it's a good spot because there is the, um, existing like IBC protocol website, which, um, I mean, I don't want to be mean about it, but it's not great. Um, so we're getting it, uh, <laughs> you know, excuse my French, but, uh, it's, uh, yeah, not the best place. So we are actually in the process of having it uh, redesigned and we want to have something uh, really like, you know, showcasing all of the IBC applications and use cases out there. And uh, one thing that we really like is Osmosis have this like uh, ecosystem page. I don't know if I can find, I can find it, here it is. So it's like pretty cool, like you could, you can filter by specific, uh, you know, like say, okay, I want to know wallets. Um, so we want to have something like that that exists for different like IBC applications or like clients or, you know, any anything in every different implementations as well to have something like that, like on the website update a bit. So yeah, we are working and trying to have a better place to keep all this like, IBC knowledge and tracking of all the cool use cases that everyone is like actually using IBC for and building on. Um, Cause yeah, I agree. It's not there. There's not really one place right now. So. Cool. Um, any, anything else or? Um, I haven't seen these diagrams. So. Nope, nothing else. Um, well, yeah, thanks everyone for joining and um, yeah, catch you all in a couple of weeks then. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks, 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 thank you. Thank you.